Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you another QMR quick movie review set. Uh, <laughs> this one is kind of an odd combination, and again, why I do these is because, you know, sometimes I just feel like watching movies, relaxing, and, you know, I guess not having to worry about doing a video after every single one of them, because I do watch a lot of movies, you know, within the span of a week or whatever. Um, so sometimes it's just more relaxing to be able to group them together, not having to worry about you know, jumping on the computer right after I'm done with just one of them. Uh, so that's why I do it, and most of the time I do try to make the movies fit together when I group them like this. Uh, this one's a little bit more varied than, uh, than it has been lately. Today we're going to be talking about the two rebooted Kickboxer movies, Kickboxer Vengeance, which came out in 2016, as well as Kickboxer Retaliation from last year in 2018, um, both with Jean-Claude Van Damme returning as a uh, mentor, Master Durand. Um, we're also going to be talking about Rocky 2 from 1979, along with Daughter of the Wolf, the new Gina Carano film, and... Uh, Towards the end on this side, I'll talk a little bit about Insidious Chapter 2. <laughs> and so yeah, there's obviously one of those movies that doesn't really belong, that I know that. Um, Daughter of the Wolf sort of ties into the Kickboxer ones, because Gina Carano does sort of have a small role in uh, Kickboxer Vengeance. So that part works, and Rocky 2 even to some extent, because it is a you know fighting movie as well. Um, but yeah, not so much Insidious Chapter 2, so I apologize for that. Um, if I get the chance, maybe I'll try to uh, timestamp where each review or thoughts, you know, portion starts or something like that in the comments. Uh, but yeah, so if you guys don't mind this, uh, but yeah, so first off, we're going to talk about the uh, Kickboxer movies. I actually uh, own both of them on DVD. I have Kickboxer Vengeance here, as well as Retaliation. And obviously, you guys know I'm a big, big uh, Jean Claude Van Damme uh, fan. So I was pretty eager to get to these. Um, and now, uh, Kickboxer Vengeance, it's a very similar, if not the same, story to uh, Van Damme's original Kickboxer film in the late 80s. Uh, but it's about uh, Lane Mossy, who uh, I, I probably just butchered his name. <laughs> um, Musi. Uh, he plays Kurt Sloan in this. He's always been there for his brother Eric, who's known in the martial arts world as a modern-day warrior. But of course, when the ruthless and undefeated fighter Tun Po, played by Dave Batista, brutally ends Eric's life in an all-holds-barred match in Thailand, Eric devotes himself to training with a master in a quest for redemption and revenge. Um, so yeah, it is kind of beat for beat the same movie as the original, although I, I do think they kind of switch the timing of things a little bit differently. In fact, even in the original uh, Kickboxer, uh, his brother isn't actually killed, he's uh, paralyzed instead. Um, but with that, I I don't know, I, I just sort of uh, felt like they had, I don't know, formatted things is the right, <laughs> the right way of saying it. Um, but they switched it around so it's not like the a, a shot for shot or a scene for scene remake necessarily so that part is appreciated a little bit um i gotta say uh, dave batista did a very nice job as ton po um he's not quite as over the top and uh you know, sort of just a greedy villain as the original was with the original actor's portrayal which is fine for the time as well uh batista's version felt more like a real character he actually has some more dialogue of his own um, and, you know, even with that, you're not really going to top Van Damme for the first one, but Elaine, I thought, did a fine job. I mean, the, most of the action in this and the fight scenes are, you know, pretty, pretty solid. Um, the choreography is pretty good. It's, uh, both of these movies, they flow pretty smoothly, I want to say, in terms of that. There are some cuts here and there, which, uh, 
mess with it a little bit sometimes, but I think it's a, it's pretty good on that end. Um, Gina Carano really doesn't have much of a role in Vengeance, which was unfortunate because I've become a pretty avid, fa avid fan of hers as well. She's really just this uh, kind of corrupt fight promoter sort of character. And I thought it was odd how they, they paid money to have uh, Gina Carano in this movie, but not to really do anything. So I didn't really think that made much uh, much sense. I mean, we're going to have her as a, as an antagonist or a character cool, but I don't know. I felt like he had taken her character out and it wouldn't have mattered, and that kind of sucks. <laughs> um, Van Damme's character is definitely the highlight. I mean, at first I was bummed out that uh, he wasn't returning as... You know the original curse song from the uh the first movie you know again it's kind of a rebooted version of the story um he's so he's playing a separate the separate master duran character here but i was still intrigued to see him again play that mentor sort of character instead and he's very very good here i gotta say this is one of my favorite uh van damme roles actually um i just thought he had a really good personality as again kind of a mentor character it made it a little bit different with him you know on that end of the the dynamic instead of the student um so a lot of their training's really good. There's a throwback to some of the, the coconuts you know, from the original movie. Um, and Van Damme actually gets in on quite a bit of the action as well. He's not really held back, at least in this first one. Um, he has some uh, fights on his own. He actually bails Kurt out a couple times. And then they have sort of this uh, you know fun action side by side and they escape from a certain place. Uh, so I actually really enjoy this. And it, it is a little bit more violent than the original one. Um, it's like in this, uh, it, it, it's to the death, so it's not like Chung Po is just knocked out at the end or something. He's very hell-bent on, uh, you know, killing him. Um, because, again, it's sort of different in this one, because the brother actually survived in the original, but in this he's uh, dead, so you kind of get the uh, get the point of that. Um, but yeah, the final fight, again, really good. Uh, Batista is convincing as Chung Po felt like a more realistic, well-rounded version of what the kind of character would be like. And uh, I liked it a lot, actually, probably more than uh, than uh, most people did. Um, could it be within my top ten favorite Van Damme movies? Again, it's hard to compare it to like his, uh, you know, starring early films. But again, I think it's one of the coolest, one of my favorite characters Van Damme's ever actually played. So could be, could be. Um, and now, Kickboxer Vengeance. I was eager to see this one as well because you have the actor who, uh, at least in part, played the Mountain through a certain. Uh, span in Game of Thrones. He also have Mike Tyson in a small role, as well as Van Damme coming back to play the Master. And I guess I have the two I actually preferred, Vengeance, I think. But Retaliation wasn't too bad either. We have, uh, we have Lance Kurt Sloan. He's brought into it after winning his fight in Vegas. He's sedated and taken to a prison in Bangkok, where he's forced to fight a 6'10 giant for freedom and one million dollars. This will require some intense training. So again, he revisits his uh, master, who actually ends up in the same prison he is, you know, for being tied to the uh, murder of Tonbo for the first one. And this we actually, well, you know, there's, there's minor spoilers, you know, throughout these, uh, ooh, excuse me, throughout these videos, I guess, um, Van Damme's actually uh, blind in this, and, you know, so they like, turn him into, like, a Daredevil kind of character, right? Um, but it doesn't really uh, hold him back at all. You know, he, he's still very, very sound in his fighting skill. Probably, again, the best in the whole, whole series, which I think he's intended to be. Um, him and uh, Mike Tyson, you know, always have a confrontation with each other, which is going to be really cool. Uh, Van Damme's team got the best of him, though, of course. Um, Van Damme, uh, I don't know. I, I just didn't like Vengeance, or excuse me, Retaliation as much. Um, Part of it is probably just because uh, straight up that Van Damme wasn't in as much of it. He didn't have as much uh, hand in the action himself as he did in the first one, which is a little disappointing. Um, we have Christopher Lambert as sort of uh, our corrupt, you know, fight promoter, sort of organizer type of character. And he's good, you know, you can tell he relishes the role and everything like that. Um, and again, the mountain <laughs> from Game of Thrones is a very convincing uh, adversary for any sort of, uh, you know, fighting movie or show. Um, but there really wasn't anything to him. He doesn't really have a lot of lines. You know, he mostly just kind of grunts. Um, and I much preferred Batista's Tonpo, who actually felt like some sort of person anyway. And, uh, you know, it sort of worked for the character he was supposed to be, but again, there wasn't really as much, uh, I don't know if I want to say depth to it, maybe too strong a word, but... 
it's not like there's as much to it. And, uh, you know, just a lot of it felt a lot more rushed than Vengeance as well. Again, Vengeance was more based on the original movie. But because of that, it also felt like a more sound uh, story. With this, it just felt like uh, random setups for uh, more action, more fight scenes, which was all right. Um, Elaine also kind of felt more artificial in this. Uh, I just wasn't feeling it quite as well. Um, the movie goes how I think it does, and it, it's hurt, the, the ending is a little more abrupt as well. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I, I did really like him though. Van Damme made it for sure, uh, but I liked him a little bit more than I thought I would actually. Um, I'd give Kickboxer Vengeance, I don't know, a B. I think I, I actually enjoyed it that much. You know, somewhere around like an 85, something like that. Um, and then Kickboxer Retaliation, I could probably give like a 79%, you know, C plus somewhere in there. Uh, maybe like an 80. Uh, but yeah, let me guys talk about both of those. And now we're going to be talking about Daughter of the Wolf, and this one Gina Carano is actually the star of. Um, I've reviewed uh, numerous movies of hers in the past, um, you know, from something like uh, Scorched Earth to uh, In the Blood and Haywire. Uh, there's a couple more of hers I need to see, but yeah, you know, I've reviewed like a good. Uh, bulk of her films, and Daughter of the Wolf just came out this year. It's actually on Redbox right now, so check it out if you would like. I don't think it's supposed to get a DVD release or anything until nearer to uh, September, I believe. I could be wrong about that. They have also stars Richard Dreyfuss and Brendan Fur. Military veteran hunts the men who kidnapped her son, so it turns into this whole survival, sort of chase through the through the snow in the woods and everything like that. And, uh, you know, I was anticipating this movie a fair bit. Uh, like I said, I do like Gina Carano. I feel like she still has a lot of untapped potential. It's like an action movie lead. I still feel like she hasn't been in a great movie yet. Um, I still feel like that's on the horizon for her, but unfortunately this one wasn't it. I was a little disappointed with it. I mean, I like the survival aspect of it, I didn't mind that it was more of like a drama thriller type of thing instead of the straight up action action. Although there's a pretty good kind of shooting confrontation near the beginning of the movie where they try to set up a deal. Um, it's mostly a slow survival and more about the thrill and sort of build up of it, I guess. Um, the wolves are utilized fairly well. Both of her, like Daughter of the Wolf, I felt like there was going to be more of a history with her character that she actually, you know, sort of like raised. You know, not in the woods, but like, you know, maybe her father, who we hear about periodically, had taken her out. Or something like that, but there's really not much explored there, except that her father wasn't really all she thought he was cracked up to be, and you know, different things like that. And I thought they could have added more uh, substance, a little more depth there, to. Uh, I was given an extra sort of edge that I was expecting. Richard Dreyfuss, you know, he's uh, charismatic, but I didn't really find him to be too threatening of a villain. I mean, the way he looks on the cover there is more threatening than he ever is in the actual movie, which is unfortunate. Uh, Brendan Fur is fine. Um, he's one of the uh, workers for uh, Dreyfus's character, you know, who uh, Gina Carano uses to try and track down her son. And, you know, he starts to have some sympathy with her and everything like that. Uh, you know, I've seen him in, another, uh, in a number of uh, independent projects. Uh, he was in, uh, he had a kind of supporting side role in 13 Eerie with my all-time favorite actress Catherine Isabel. And he's been in a few other things over the years. I didn't mind him. He's always semi-likable anyway, if not a bit uh, dry. Um, there definitely could have been more action to it. Like I said, I, I was fine when I realized it wasn't going to be that kind of movie. But I still felt like they, no movie has like fully utilized Gina Carano the way they could. Uh, I feel like she hasn't quite landed in the right movie yet. Um, although she does have a pretty sweet kill with it. I think it's a Tom Hawker and Axe, one of the two it was. Um, I thought they were going to a little bit more of that. Uh, just simple things that, that I think are obvious that they could have added to it, but they didn't. <laughs> uh, the environment, again, was the best part of it. But other than that, it was a bit of a letdown for me. I, I seen some people uh, bashing it pretty harshly. I wouldn't go that far with it. I still would give it, I don't know, some like a C, somewhere in the 70% range, I'm not sure. Um, 73, 76%, somewhere in there, I think. Well, then you guys talk about if you have a chance to see it yet. Like I said, it's on Redbox, or you can uh, run it on Amazon, I believe, as well. So yeah, Daughter of the Wolf. And then now, switching gears in a major way, 
Uh, we're going to be talking about Rocky II, of course, starring Sylvester Stallone and Carl Weathers, actually directed and written by Sylvester Stallone, of course, uh, the direct follow-up of the original Rocky. Uh, Rocky struggles in family life after his battle with Apollo Creed, while the embarrassed champ insistently goads him, incessantly, excuse me, goads him to accept a challenge for a rematch. Uh, now I reviewed the uh, first Rocky and another QMR in the past. Uh, you know, I thought it was fine. You know, I, I appreciated it for what it was. But I gotta say, Rocky II, I honestly personally prefer even more. I think it was a more entertaining movie. Um, I think there's uh, better performances that went into it. There's just kind of more to the movie in general. Uh, you know, I like the themes that were explored with uh, Rocky sort of having a sudden fame now because, again, their fight basically ended in a draw. Apollo Creed technically declared as the winner, but a lot of people feeling like Rocky had sort of uh, taken it there in a non-official capacity. Um, so you have Apollo dealing with the, you know, white people talk about how they actually believe Rocky won the fight, really, when it came down to it. And then you have Rocky dealing again with his sudden fame and all this money for him and Adrian. Um, you know, and he doesn't really know how to uh, deal with it all yet. Um, so he's spending a lot of money left and right on a new car, new jackets and everything. But that money, even that much money at the time, quickly dwindles away, and he ends up working in like a meat factory and everything like that. Um, the person not believing he has to uh, fight Apollo again, because um, they're going to leave it there. Um, but yeah, eventually, you know, he's sort of, you know, Rocky has a lot of enormous amount of uh, pride and you know, stubbornness and everything, so eventually he is drawn into it, um, especially when he sees uh, you know, how bad off they are, and you know, Adrian might have it. I have to go back to working her uh, part-time job at the pet store and everything. Um, but yeah, just on those themes, it made Rocky feel like even more of a real character than, than he was before, even more relatable. And uh, Adrian sort of has some uh, health issues in this one as well when, it, when uh, something sort of occurs. And actually a pretty good performance from Sylvester Stallone when he goes to visit her in the hospital in one particular scene that I quite liked. Um, and again, even uh, Apollo Creed, Carl Weathers uh, gave a good performance. He felt like more of a real character in this. Yeah, he's sort of still that arrogant, sort of uh, full of himself fighter um, champion who uh, is just in denial about Rocky possibly getting the better of him. But you have this scene early on where they're both in the same hospital. Rocky goes to visit him, asks him if he gave him a good fight, and he actually says he did. Um, so again, it's like how he acts in front of the camera and his persona and everything. We can sort of see their uh, potential friendship and respect to each other building just a bit. And the way the movie ends with Rocky getting up before he does and Apollo falling down, um, then they sort of embrace each other a bit. So I'm happy with that's how, it's been how that's been developing. And again, it felt just like more of a real movie, a real story here. Um, <clears throat> and you know, again, Rocky sort of being humbled by having that fame and sort of being taken away um, when he loses his money and sort of has to, uh, you know, scrape to find uh, more work and everything like that. So yeah, I really enjoyed Rocky too. Actually, I'm giving it a. Yeah, I feel like I give it like an 85, 87 percent, almost into a B plus range. It's uh, my favorite of the two Rocky films so far. I will be watching uh, three and four at some point. I'm just not sure when. Um, I'm particularly looking forward to a Rocky Ford to see uh, Lundgren and then have it go into the Creed, you know, story and everything. But, yeah, I like Rocky too quite a bit. And uh, our last film we're going to talk about, not for long though, and that is Insidious Chapter 2, which came out in uh, 2013, and again stars Rose Byrne as well as Patrick Wilson. Lynn Shea, and you have Barbara Hershley in there as well. The Lambert's believe they have defeated the spirits, uh, have haunted their family, but they soon discover that evil is not beaten so easily. So again, it's like one of those, you know, all those possession haunting type movies we've gotten all these years. Um, I reviewed the first Insidious in its own video, actually. I actually uh, liked it. Um, I thought it was uh, probably some of the best of those, you know, again, crop of sub-genre films we've gotten all, you know, for the past decade or so. Um, I haven't made an argument for maybe liking it better than the, one of the Conjuring movies. Certainly better than those spin-offs. 
Um, so I was semi-eager to see Chapter 2, especially with Patrick Wilson still on it, who is an actor I like quite a bit. And of course, the cliffhanger lady about the end of the first movie definitely warrants a follow-up, maybe. Although I feel like they could have just left it and it would have uh, had a similar effect anyway. So again, you have this question of Patrick Wilson's father character, whether he's uh, possessed or not, whether he lost that mental battle with that uh, spirit. Um, so again, you have the paranoia of that, I guess, and again, still questions about the kid and everything, and, uh, Lin Chase character's fate. Overall, I was, <laughs> I was not too happy with this movie, I didn't like it too well. A lot of it just felt more rushed, a lot of, it, a lot of the, uh, scares felt more on the nose, there wasn't as much atmosphere, there wasn't as much suspense or build-up, it just felt really kind of rushed and kind of, uh, just thrown together to, uh, do another one for a quick profit. I didn't care for it. Patrick Wilson still does fine, so does uh, Byrne, um, but besides that, it, I don't know. You know, Patrick Wilson's always easy to root for, so I was hoping for the best for the outcome for the character, and you kind of get it, but it, again, just a lot of things felt rushed, and uh, the runtime it was uh, like an hour and 46, a lot of things just felt like cut together very quickly, um, just not as much patience with uh, the way they are trying to build the story, and I don't know. It, it just didn't feel like as well as well made as the first one was. Which again wasn't the greatest movie in the world either, but certainly more respectable than this. Uh, I, I'd give this like a D something, somewhere in there, you know, 60% range. It's not a complete fail because there are still competent actors in there. But uh, somewhere in there. <laughs> I don't know. Let well, you guys saw about Insidious Chapter 2, I don't really have any interest in seeing those other sequels they did, which I didn't even realize they did until uh, my girlfriend told me, uh, told me about them after we had watched this. So yeah, let you guys stop. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.